Okay, good morning everybody. Uh, my name is David Durant. Uh, I've been the Hackett Delivery Manager uh, on this short project, Hackett Education Evidence. Uh, and this is the show and tell at the end of this week long project. We're going to tell you all about how it went uh, and what the service does. So, in this session, we're going to have uh, a quick introduction to what the service is all about. Um, we're going to talk about who the team was, uh, a little bit of, of history leading up to this, what we've achieved in the, as I say, only one week long project. Uh, and then we're going to have a demo at the end and talk about what's next. There'll be time for questions. So, project vision. So, in year admissions uh, is a service provided by Hackney Education. Uh, so, this enables parents to say that they want to um, enroll their child in the middle of a school year, 152 applications submitted per month, uh, and they need to uh, submit a certain amount of evidence via documents to demonstrate that um, the child's date of birth and various other pieces of information are correct. Uh, so the purpose of this project was to reuse the document uploader tool that was created for uh, benefits and housing needs as one of the several really excellent services that were created as a conjunction of work between benefits and housing needs, Hackett, uh, our external supplier, Maytech, uh, and FutureGov. Uh, you might have heard of things like Single View, uh, and there's a number of other uh, services that we're starting to reuse uh, across the council. Uh, and the document uploader tool is definitely one of those. Uh, and this is what we've reused uh, in this project. So the goals of this project, uh, replace physical visits made by in-year applicants um, just by allowing them to submit evidence remotely, provide uh, residents with a method of security provide evidence, uh, and enable Hackney Education to complete these evidence checks uh, in a really efficient way. So for example, uh, previously these uh, documents were submitted by email, uh, and then I believe they've put in a shared drive. Now they're going to be sitting in a service that people in the in-year admissions uh, staff can access um, and everybody will be able to see all of the uh, information in one place. So this has been the team. Uh, so David's been our product owner. He's going to be demoing the service uh, in a little while towards the end of uh, this show and tell. I've been the delivery manager. Uh, Kat, Matt and Bogdan have been our developers from Maytech. Uh, and Soraya was our relationship manager working with Hackney Education uh, and sorting out getting this project off the ground. So a little bit of uh, history. I think I've probably been through this already. We made these tools with benefits and housing needs, uh, and we're now repurposing one of them to uh, be used for Hackney Education. We were given one week to, to do that in. Uh, and this is a list of things that, at the start of the project, uh, we thought we were, were going to do. So we're going to fork, that means create a copy of the code and set up a, a new deployment pipeline. Now, many years ago, I, I used to be a, a professional developer myself, and that would, that would just that task alone would take absolutely ages and ages and ages. And this got done by the team in the first day, which is just, to me, was staggeringly impressive. Um, we've set the uploaded docs to be automatically released after five years and aligned with our data retention policy. So we changed the text on the site so it wasn't for benefits and housing needs, it was corrected to make it uh, what we would have wanted for Hackney Education. Um, we changed the um, types that you could indicate which documents you're uploading, they will show those off later. We've added a bunch of, of tests that interact with our new service as if a user is using it, just to make sure it's always working properly. Those tests are always automatically run every time you uh, push a new update into production. Uh, we've added authentication based around G Suite, so a user logs in with their Google account, as we're increasingly doing for lots of services uh, across the council. Um, so we've uh, change the form that people fill in, in this case, uh, parents or guardians supplying information to the service so that it has the right data. And then obviously we then replay that data back to staff later so they can see it. Uh, we set it up so that uh, the documents are view viewable in browsing tabs that it need to be downloaded by staff. That's another one that was was really impressive. Um, one of our developers went, oh, that's, that's really hard. I'm not even sure how I do that. And then a couple of hours later, it's like, oh, it's done. <laughs> so, so that was very cool. 
Um, and we've done a set of accessibility testing to make sure that the service is going to be usable by as many people as possible. Now, that was only the things that we thought we had to do, but we got it done so quickly that we had a bunch of extra stuff that we've managed to do on top of that, even though we had a week to do the project. So we've added uh, Google Analytics and a thing called Hotjar, which are things that allow us to monitor how the service is being used. So we get an idea of um, not just how many people are using the service, but how they're interacting with the site. So we can see if there's particular parts of the site that people are being uh, confused with, um, and so we can make some updates accordingly. Uh, so we added pagination in. So that means that when we've got this site being uh, once this site's been running for a long time, and there's a lot of evidence that's been uploaded by uh, parents and guardians, that there isn't just an enormously long page of all of that that people in health education need to wade through. Uh, they're now seeing chunks. Uh, we added some searching and filtering, so you could look for specific um, children by name or date of birth. And we set up a couple of email things, one of which uh, sends a, a, an email to uh, a person who submitted it to say, thank you for adding the... Um, uh, information, but there's also a, uh, a way that uh, health education staff can reject an application and that will now automatically send an email through to people who submitted it to say that their application has failed. So, over to David, uh, and it's live demo time. So I will stop presenting and it's all over to you. Thanks, David. Um, just let me get my screen up. Okay, so we'll start with the um, the parent experience. Um, um, we we're sending out the um, the link to this service um, with the confirmation email the parent gets at the point of submitting their in year application, um, and the, the, uh, we'll embed the link to this service in that confirmation email, asking them to upload evidence. Um, First of all, they, they choose what the nature of the evidence it is from the drop-down box. This was a change from the um, the housing version. Um, and, and parents can submit all sorts of things to us, proof of, you know, social medical reasons for wanting the school, etc. So if they just choose one of these, it gives us an idea. Um, they can uh, choose the file like so. Um, and then click Upload. So they've got the first document and they can leave it at that and provide this further information before submitting, or they can upload several documents in, in one go. Um, I forgot to choose, uh, choose the file there. So they do the uploading. So they've got the bits they want to upload there. Then they add in the details that we thought were important for um, to help us match the evidence with the child's application. Um, so these fields were all changed from the housing version of the um, of the solution as well. Um, um, and of course, the email is really important for us to match up. They're putting an email in as part of their application process, so we assume they'll use the same email there. So across all that, one of our biggest challenges in the past has been the fact that evidence comes in um, and the parent literally just sends an email with hardly, you know, you're just guessing from their email address. You don't know, you know, what what child or application it relates to. So this makes it much easier for us to um, add that. And of course, the parent can type whatever information they want to tell us at this point as, as kind of notes. It's not compulsory. Um, and then they submit like that. It brings them back to here. But I'll skip across to my email now. And I should have, um, sorry, which window am I going to bear with? Not that one. <laughs> Slick presentation here. Uh, take the time, though, it's fine. <laughs> Feeling the pressure. I think it's this one, actually. It was right there all the time. Um, I 
It hasn't come in yet. I did send it to David. While you're waiting for that to come through, do you want to skip on to the next bit? Maybe we can come back to that in a bit. Yeah. Okay, so so this is the I've got a, a, a different window open to pretend to be the staff member. Um, so if I if I log in, um, you know, through magic that I don't understand, I just have to click on sign in with Google, and um, I'm kind of straight in to the back office um, of the tool. Um, the information is divided into two sections, basically. Drop boxes or, or evidence that's come in from parents that is yet to be reviewed shows in the main screen. Um, and then evidence that's come in previously is all in the archived section um, of the, the solution. Um, here's the evidence I just submitted. So I click on my name and my officer can at this point view the evidence. Um, and so without. I wanted to try and avoid them having to download every single piece of evidence onto, you know, um, a Google Drive or our K Drive as we're still using at the moment. So um, the officer will be able to just view the evidence by clicking it, see the picture, um, and then go, yep, that's right, and perhaps mark the database that we've seen the address evidence, and there'll be no need to download it at this point. So they can view those those ev that evidence. Um, and then if they're happy with it, they can click move to archive. Um, and then it will move across to this side and we won't need to look at it again. That's the theory. Um, the re we thought it was useful for us to be able to um, search by, you know, uh, any of the columns. And um, in particular, the only reason why we might need to come back to evidence in the future is where a parent, you know, 12 months down the line is appealing for a school place or they submit a subject access request or something like that. And we can quickly and easily use this search to, um, you know, to limit the, um, you know, uh, to filter the information that's there. Um, I, I could see this for admissions building up really quite quickly. So um, the guys added this um, uh, way to manage the number of entries per page to switch between the different pages. And, and the, the search will be, um, you know, really important. Um, if we're mostly working with um, recent documents, you'll be able to pull all the ones that were rejected to the top by filtering by the rejection reason and so on. So there's a bit of functionality um, added in to these two views of the drop boxes or the evidence um, and also the ability to switch them back into submitted order. Um, let's see if that email confirmations come in. There it is. So um, thank you for submitting the evidence. Um, this is your confirmation. Uh, your doc documents will now be processed and and we link to a, a google form that i created just for them very simple for them to give some feedback about the use of the, the document um, that's come from education evidence but it, it's got a reply to um, the admissions service directly so if a parent just hits reply it comes straight back to us so that's really useful i mean there's there's one thing to be on the parent page having done it and then you get back to this bit and the parents like has it gone i don't know what's happened um you know so that that was a really useful addition I mean, parents are very nervous about their child's application and you know i could see a good proportion of our parents immediately telephoning us saying i've just used your service you know has it come has it arrived so we want that 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 confirmation email was really important to help keep the telephone calls and the contact down and reassure parents that their documents had come through. Um, if I consider that submission I made now uh, by clicking on it, um, say this, the officer views the document and sees that it's either blurry or um, 
you know, that it's insufficient evidence, this brilliant um, facility to reject what's come in um, it has been added, which is just going to make this so um, powerful for my team. So they can click the reject button, button and say, you know, give the parents some text about what they need to do. Um, please resubmit um, your, um, you know, whatever, submit further evidence. Um, they can provide a little bit of explanation. Um, you know, there was, um, as it was without the ability to do this, if my officer received one of these documentation and it was insufficient, they'd then have to externally start a separate email um, and 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 copy the address out of this, the email address out of the system and so on. This really makes it um, uh, really user friendly for my team. So please submit further evidence about your utility bills or something like that. You know, we can type, the point is we can type whatever we want. Say the parent submitted some medical evidence and it's insufficient, we might be able to just give them a little bit of a hint about what to do next. So if I confirm the rejection um, and go back to the main Dropbox, that submission has now moved over into the archive Dropboxes because I rejected it. And it shows up giving the rejection reason. So if multiple officers and multiple officers will be working this service, you know, to deal with the evidence that comes in, they can easily spot where uh, and the basis on which it was rejected previously by another officer. So that's all there to be seen. If they get, if we get a telephone call saying you rejected my evidence, I don't understand what I need to do next. They can easily log in here and match on the child. Um, and, and take the telephone call in real time to kind trying to guide the parent more. Um, I think that hopefully we'll be able to look at the rejection text there as well, if that's popped through. Yeah, here's the rejection. So if I open that one up, again, similar, thanks for submitting documents. Your documents are being processed, but there's a problem and you need to take further action as explained below. There's the verbatim text I, I entered in. Um, and then advice about how to go back to the service and resubmit. So, you know, as, a, as an overall package, that is really a powerful tool for my team now to collect evidence. At the moment, it's coming in via um, separate emails. Um, the matching up takes a long time. And, and this will really um, help my team. The other side of the equation is um, is around the less able parents. So we've got, you know, a good portion of our parents are able to um, use a scanning app on their smartphone or, or um, you know, attach a, a, a photo from their photos to an email and send it to us. But there's a, a fair proportion of parents that aren't quite IT literate to that level. And um, when you use this service on a mobile or a tablet, um, at the point where you go to attach evidence, it directly links into the camera and, and you can choose to just take a photo at that point. So it takes away the need for the parent to understand about how to attach something from a different area of their phone to an email and send it through. Um, they can literally just say, send a document, take a camera shot right there and then, and the job's done. So it, it's really going to bridge a bit of a gap for the less IT literate um, families to be able to provide evidence to us. Whereas in the past, they would really have no choice but to visit it, it, us in person or go and have a copy made and, and mail it into us. Um, and of course, at this time in particular, mailing stuff in is really challenging we can't we haven't got any staff in the office to collect the post that kind of thing so you know I, it's it's a big win both for the parents and for my team i think i'll stop talking there that's brilliant thank you very much <clears throat> okay can you stop sharing your screen please and i'll put mine back on oh, okay let me just do this just a moment uh...
Okay, hopefully folks can see my screen now. Excellent. So thank you for that uh, really detailed demo, David. That was great. Uh, so I'm going to be sharing that uh, in a few places to show off the great work that's been done. And also David's going to share that with his team. Um, and now to work what's next. So top of my list is to work with uh, Paul, who's uh, on the call. Thank you much for coming along uh, to move this service into being supported by Hackney Education IT team, who are now uh, part of Hackett, to make sure that this is being looked after. Uh, and then we're going to use the tools I mentioned earlier, Google Analytics and, and Hotjar, to monitor how the service is being used to see if uh, parents and guardians are struggling with the service and if we can improve it in any way. Um, and then we're going to continue to collect feedback, both from staff using the tool, um, and we'll uh, think of some ways to get feedback from residents to make sure that there are Again, things that we can add into a backlog so the next time we've got some available budget, we can do some improvements to make this tool even better. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, yes. Excellent. Please, please leap in. Just fire the camera up so you know who's talking. So yeah, first, uh, I guess I'll start off with first I heard of this was when your mail dropped in my inbox yesterday, I think it was David, wasn't it? Uh, it was earlier in the week, certainly. Yeah, okay. Um, so yeah, i not, not come across it before, hadn't heard anything about it. So I guess my first question was, uh, what, why didn't we hear anything about it? Uh, okay, I mean, that, that kind of conversation isn't absolutely valid one i don't know if you want to have that on this uh call i think probably the best thing to do is to have a chat about um how uh education is fitting in with the, the project pipeline uh for how hackett puts projects together i think there's going to be an increasing amount of uh education stuff that's going to come out of the reuse of things that we've built for other services in the council the uh, yeah that are specifically we put together to be able to be reused for things. Now we're doing some work on how the project pipeline evolves anyway, and I think it'd be really good if you wanted to, to get involved in that. Um, we have at the moment a, uh, a backlog of projects that are in a good state to be picked up, but that we're waiting for to have the people available to be able to work on them. Okay. Uh, but, what, but what we don't have is a really well locked down way of um deciding which projects get uh done in what order and uh how they get spun up that's a little bit ad hoc so mm -hmm. we're, we're definitely doing some active work on exactly that at the moment so it would be uh, useful to have you come yeah I, I, from my perspective as well paul uh, i can um i can give you the quick potted history after this of how this came to happen it's all happened very very <laughs> by chance and, and and the development very quickly you know it's yeah, just been amazing so yeah, yeah. I, I latched onto it when i when i saw the opportunity to to have access to this type of tool so but i can i can fill you in about how it came to be that i was involved with this um yeah, okay, that, yeah. that, that'd be great i've got another meeting directly after but i think i've got some time later this afternoon um, so that's fine. So, uh, so I, I, I'd like to try and under, understand the support side of it. The first um, part of that would be what what type of support would it need? So, um, I think what we're what we're looking at. I mean, again, we can possibly just just go offline and get the details on this. But I think in the first instance, it's a question of uh, if something goes wrong. Does this come in through, do, do tickets come in through the standard Hackett support desk? Um, because then what would happen is they would probably get passed on to yourself just for um, a kind of first level triage, just which might just be the users not quite as happy how it works. Now, normally we might expect that to get picked up by somebody like application support in IT, but in this case, honestly, it's just going to be David's team mostly. So I think it's just going to be him helping it out. So I don't suspect there's going to be any impact for be yourself there and if there's any if it's broken then it's going to come back to the to the hackney and, and maybe the people would actually fix it but rather, rather than go through all the support stuff on this call david because so um because this session's mostly focused uh on um 
uh, other stakeholders. Uh, what I'd like to do is, is have that as a separate chat, if that's okay. I'm um, very happy. Yeah, to that's, that's fine. No, no, I've seen it. No, no a little bit where it's come from and uh, and how it's going to help out David's team. That's fine. It's just that I, I, I can't quite grasp if we're going to be supporting it or, you, or central IT, as you said, but we can take that offline. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll definitely sort that out. But thank you much for coming along. Uh, does anybody else have any questions? Uh, if not, I'll wrap up. No, lovely. All right. In which case, I just want to thank everybody again. Uh, David's been been great uh, helping all the way through. The, the development team has been exceptional in terms of the speed of which they've been able to deliver all this functionality. I've been very impressed. Uh, I will look forward to hearing about how uh, David's team is using it uh, and getting any feedback. If there's any way that we can tweak it to improve it in the future. Okay. Absolutely. I add my thanks as well to the guys for and you, David, for the project, because I think it is really, particularly in the current climate, it, it's it's really the sort of tool that, um, you know, that is going to make life much easier for us um, and for and for parents. And, um, you know, in particular, that we had the opportunity to get involved with this without any cost to my service was a key factor in us being able to do this. So thanks to um um you know everybody in that regard as well cool well lovely always glad to help all right all right thanks so much everybody thank you bye thank you bye